you ready for Time in the Word? Time in the Word. by Rejoice in Jesus Ministries, an on-fire Bible-centered teaching ministry based in Los Angeles, California, with outreaches throughout the United States, stretching from coast to coast. Join us now as Pastor Chester C. Pippen Jr. brings us an exciting, anointed message. to stand before God. He's going to have, have you come up and say, what did you do with the life I gave you? How many other lives did you bring? What did you understand about what I've caused you to do? Did you waste time chasing this and chasing that? Or did you do things that were a blessing? That would be a blessing to me. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> but ye, brethren, build up your most, build up yourself with your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. That's a sign that you need to be praying in the, in the Holy Spirit a lot. How much do you guys get up and pray in the Spirit? All of you are Spirit-filled in here. You pretty much all know how to pray in the Spirit. How much do you do it? Go ahead. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, unto eternal life. Good. And of some have compassion, making a difference, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. <laughs> okay. Say, reach out to some making a difference. But there's some, he says, save with fear. Now, sometimes we hear preachers say stuff like, oh, you don't want to say anything, it's going to cause fear. But there's a godly fear. And that's not the only place it says there that. It says, some save with fear. When you realize what you got to face, you need to be aware of it. Because it's not something you want to be involved in. I mean, get that bad part. So God is trying to say, deal with yourself. If you don't get it in the nice things I tell you about, look at this. Look at what's going to happen to you. That's enough to make even the toughest of people turn. He said to me one day that <clears throat> think of the worst place that you can think of and the worst thing you can think of in this whole earth. And he said, bad as that is, the very best place in hell is worse than that. Think of the worst thing you can think of, the worst combination of things on this earth. Stuff that hasn't happened, that you can think of could happen. That's how bad it is. And he, hell, the best place in hell, in hell is worse than that. That's to let you know you really don't want to go there. And you don't even want your, your worst enemy to go there. 
because it's that bad. We can't imagine how horrible hell is. But it's there. <clears throat> and there's no escape, no getting out. You can't die. You're an eternal being. You're there forever. Whatever you go through, you just have to suffer with it. Go ahead. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Turn to First Corinthians. Second chapter. Okay, now this is something we hear all the time as far as different men of God, they teach this. But there's one part that's not emphasized enough. Look at uh, uh, verse 9, excuse me, chapter 2. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. See, I read, read over that. He said, I has not heard in the ear, or ear. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man. Hasn't even entered into your heart. Go ahead. The things which God hath prepared for them that love him. For them that love him. Now you hear that all the time. God's got this prepared for you. God, he loves you. I mean, because God loves you and he's got this for prepared for you. Man, heaven is so great that you can't even imagine and that's true. But is it for everybody? No. Everybody's not going to be there. You know, it's a funny thing. <clears throat> I shouldn't say this maybe, but I must say it. Uh, when we had the exodus in the ministry in the year 2000, and the Lord said for me to reach as many of them as I could. I said, Lord, they're, they're not exactly ready to hear from me. And he said, reach out to as many of them as you can. And he said, because there are some of them that are not even going to make it into the kingdom. So, and I noticed there were some people, he went out of the way to try to reach them. And he would tell them not to be with certain people. That was their good buddy here on earth. I mean, they're still there on earth. But I'm just saying that they were their, one of their good friends. And God said, dissuade them from being with them if you can. They, there was something, he didn't say a word to the other person, the bad person. Because evidently their hearts had gotten so hard or gotten to the point where he felt like, just, I'm not even going to bother with them. But he said to the other person who was hanging with him, get them away from him if you can. <clears throat> God doesn't see things as we see them. We, he sees things from a, a mighty perspective. We see things from an ignorant position. And I hate to say it like that, but that's the way we, we understand. He says, 
I don't even want you hanging with this person. I don't want you doing this or being involved with certain things. Because there's, there's things in that person's heart that's going to influence you. And very good possibility there's a demon operating in their life. The reason that they act like that. And so you're not just dealing with the person, you're dealing with the, the devil or the demon that the devil has sent. He wants you to learn to recognize what you're dealing with. This is part of the warfare that we're all in. And it used to trip me out because I would watch him reach out to this one and he wouldn't say anything to that one. I thought, wow. That's a trip. But he wasn't, you know, God loves everybody. And he wasn't just saying, well, this one, I'm going to just let you just die. He was doing what he could to reach them. But they obviously were listening to the demon. And he didn't want them to be around that person. And so the other one was just looking at it from a natural friendship kind of position and they didn't even understand what they were dealing with and so God said dissuade them from being around here <clears throat> sometimes we had a little success sometimes we didn't have any but I didn't understand myself at first but now I do because there's some things that even though you're born again, you know the word somewhat. You have some degree of relationship with the Lord. But there are influences coming at you, coming at all of us. And he says we all must be tested. And even now he's saying that when people do crazy things, I said, but Lord, what, what about that person? What can, ha what can we do? He said, they have to be tested. One time he yelled at me. He said, I, didn't I tell you they had to be tested? I shut up at that point. Because <laughs> I was uh, kind of like getting humanistic. <laughs> but he was looking at the evil that was coming out of that person. And the demon that was on on top of him, I guess, was eaten. None of you in here are in that bag. <laughs> so don't don't start looking at each other. <laughs> but uh, that was a, a really tough period and I remember Dan and I uh, Dan was my assistant pastor and he uh, he and I sat down one day and we sat there and we decided we would uh, just figure out how much money we would have left and how we could make it with all the we kind of figured out all the bills that we were going to have to pay and how much we had and at the time, we, we had close to a million dollars in the bank. And <clears throat> there were just different things that came up. And we figured out what we had to spend and what we were going to have to deal with. And we figured that was uh, around September, October in 2000. And we figured that by September of 2001, based on how much was coming in with the people that were leaving and what we were going to have to spend, we said by 2001, we, we were going to go broke. We didn't know how we, could, we were going to survive. But guess what? This is the year 2019. And we're still here. 
<clears throat> God is on top of everything. A lot of things you think, oh, he's too busy with important things. But he sees every little small detail. It kind of trips me out. Because sometimes you think, well, he's not paying any attention to that. But he did. And he'll sometimes let you know that. <laughs> so, always stay before the, in the face of the Lord if you can. Talk to him. Just let him know how much you care about him. And let him know that you are aware that he cares about you. And sometimes some things you want to do that he's not happy with you doing it, but that's for your good. That's not just to torment you. It's him trying to reach you so that you don't get into a situation where he has to end up judging you because he can't cheat for you. I remember the first time that happened, uh, there was this man of God and he was, uh, it was somewhere, it was this building on Wilshire, and uh, they had this big event. And the guy was a man of God, and he, he preached. And when he was preaching, he was just kind of like, he was just real soft-spoken. And Jesus loves you. And blah, 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 blah. And the word says, such a such thing. Vonda, Dan, and I were sitting at this one table. And the guy was ministering. And when I looked up, I saw this demon coming up. And there were some areas that I was dealing with that I was, he, the Lord had been telling me to deal with. And so he was speaking, and he said, he looked right at me, he said, what do you want me to do, change for you? And then he went right back to speaking soft. <laughs> I went, and then they said, Pastor, it looked like he was talking to you. I said, yeah, he was. Because <laughs> he was telling, the Lord was telling me, that's some area you got in the flesh, you got to quit. You're my servant, I've called you, you better change. And I was a little slow to move. <laughs> and so he had the guy get my attention. Needless to say, it didn't take me long after that. <laughs> but it was a trip because he's just speaking real soft and everybody was just almost straining to hear him. And then he just yelled when he got to me. And like, what I'm saying is that God notices everything about you. you. Don't think you're getting away with anything. It's just you don't always have somebody to yell at you. <laughs> but praise God. I'm glad he did. It didn't take me long to correct myself after that. But we know the word, and we hear the word, and sometimes we just ignore it and go our own fleshy way. And we think we're okay because we, well, you're still coming to church and you're doing whatever you have to do. And you think you're all right but you might not be. You need to check yourself and make sure you're walking in line with the word and that you're loving the Lord. Do you love me? I do, I do. <laughs> Darling, I still care. Anyway, uh, turn to... Uh, well, no, keep on the same chapter. To those who love him, 
these blessings will come to you. Look at verse 10. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Praise God. We have the spirit of God in us. When you got born again, that time where the, where the Lord uh, took me to heaven and the Holy Spirit, well, I, the Father was over here and, and so I don't know how we got on the, con on the conversation, but some kind of way we got on the conversation that we're going to have a body just like his. And so I said, what is, can I touch you? And he looked at me first kind of sternly, but then he said, okay. And I touched his face, and it felt soft just like your human skin. But it was impregnable. You could have taken a gun and put it right up there and fired, and it wouldn't have done nothing but bounce off. Of it. And so... After I talked to him a bit, a few minutes about that, I asked him, was the Holy Spirit the same way? Is his body going to be the same as, as that? And he said, why don't you go ask him? And I, yeah, so he said, he's right over there. And I looked around, there was this guy, he was about uh, six foot three. Now keep in mind, the Holy Spirit can be whatever size he wants to. But in this case, he was six, about six foot three. <clears throat> and he was kind of a, a jolly person. He eked with power. Notice when, the, when you see, when you read the word and different people, different power, things take place and the Holy Spirit was involved with it. And it says, the Spirit of God did this. Often great power things take place with the Holy Spirit. I'm sure all of them are about the same, but they're not three different people. There's this one person in three different manifested forms. So, anyway, when, when he got through talking about it, uh, he took me down this walkway and we walked and talked about different things and then we got to this edge and we could look down into earth and there were these a whole bunch of people and as I looked at them some of them were unsaved but as they got saved there was this little miniature Holy Spirit that looked exactly like him, only they were real short, small. And as they got saved, they would jump in, these little ones would jump inside of them. So everywhere you go, you better watch out. The Holy Spirit's in there with you. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I said something stupid, and he said, and he, he kind of chided me about it. <laughs> but uh, he was saying that we decided, whenever he was talking about the whole Godhead, we had a meeting and we decided that, you know, he said, now I've, it's already said that I can be everywhere at once. And so if I'm everywhere at once, how can I fit inside somebody? It says in the word that the Holy Spirit goes inside you. So how else do you think that could that could take place? 
So he said, I'm not even sure that's the way it really looks, but so I can understand it. He said, that's the way it is, these small, little small Holy Spirits. They're inside of you. He's inside of you. He's also, there's also one with you. Whereas the paraclete means the one who walks with you and stands by you. So we got a ministry of the Holy Spirit in you and with you. You also have at least one angel. So what is the excuse any of us have when things aren't right? <laughs> anyway. So when you go and get into something that's not cool, you're taking God with you. I want you to be a... We would like to send you a tape of this entire message. For any donation of $5 or more, we will send you a CD. For any donations of $12 or more, we will send you a DVD. Please write to us at Rejoice in Jesus Ministries, P.O. Box, 47775 Los Angeles, California 90047 or call 323 Rejoice. Please mention tape offer number TITW 1384. That is tape offer number TITW 1384. Hi, you know the Bible says that all things are upheld by the power of this word? That means when you put the word in your heart, it will produce life and health to all your flesh. It will also produce faith so that whatever you come up against, you can overcome it. But remember, you won't have the victory you desire unless you make a decision to not allow anything to get in the way of your intimacy with Jesus, nor allow anything to distract you from your time in Thank you for watching Time in the Word. If you are blessed by today's message, we'd love to hear from you. You can write us at P.O. Box 47775, Los Angeles, California, 90047. Or call us at 323-735-6923. That's 323-REJOICE. And if you're in the Los Angeles area, visit our worship service on Saturday nights at 7.30 p.m., 1304 Cochran Avenue, corner of Cochran and Packard Street. And again, thank you for watching Time in the Word.